So John, the other big piece of news today as we speak is the uh, impending funeral procession for Queen Elizabeth II. But you and I have spoken privately about Prince Harry and the independent path he's taking in an attempt to break away from the, the stoicism and, and, and tradition of, of the royal family. He's living a totally different life. He's not even living in the UK. He's over in Los Angeles in the United States. What, can you give us your, your view on uh, perhaps what, what's motivating him or what it is that drives him to, to say, okay, we've got to make a break from this endless tradition? Well, I believe he's got a conscience. Uh, everyone's got a conscience. Eh? Everyone knows what's right, what's wrong, wrong, and you've got to decide which way you go. So, uh, so three cheers for Harry. He's decided to, to listen to his conscience. He's sick and tired of all the really uh, bowing and scraping and, and all the the, <laughs> the rip-offs that go with the uh, monarchy, and he's decided to opt out. And uh, uh, I think that's wonderful. And uh, in the procession, you notice all the members of the uh, the royal family are all in military uniform. Yes. This, uh, this is the mark of power. They're saying we've got power over you. He's the only one in his cities. Okay. So I think that's wonderful. And uh, uh, so good luck to Harry. He's he he doesn't like, like the grovelling and, and misleading. Uh, and. But I think even Queen Elizabeth, sorry, I've had a stroke, so I'm talking funny. Uh, she tried to, to tell the truth back in 57. In fact, I mentioned in my book, uh, her Chris, Christmas telecast of 57 says, oh, no, I don't give you laws, I can't administer justice. So she's telling people that she hasn't got sovereignty. She's come clean. But that was sort of 50 years ago, and not a word since. But so I feel sorry for poor old Elizabeth because she's been under the hammer and she knows full well that she's only been a front for all the, the scoundrels behind her. Well, 1957, yes, that that is a long time ago. In fact, it's yep. 65 long years ago. <laughs> but yeah. Britain, Britain is uh, a country where there is a class structure. Now, okay, but perhaps that traditional class structure has broken down somewhat. After all, we are now living in the 21st century. But you still certainly see remnants of it over oh, there. It, it, there's, there's still power uh, involved in the whole situation. And, uh, but England depend upon their monarchy. There's a big tourist attraction. They, they have the ceremony and so forth. And I, I think uh, once uh, England, if it ever loses the monarchy completely, it will become such an ordinary place. It will be, become a lovely place. I lived there for nine years. It's a beautiful place. So uh, the monarchy I associate with, with slavery because the monarchy symbolises empire, and all all the empires all around the world world have been founded upon slavery. Whereas the German Reich. Reich is another word for empire, or the Japanese empire, the Roman empire, whatever empire you like, it's all founded upon slavery. And so, we'll, and by Harry standing, standing up for himself and saying, no, I've had enough of this. I don't think he'll blow the whistle completely because he'll, he'll embarrass too many of his friends and so forth. But the class structure is very, very strong in England. And back in the 17th century, when Cromwell declared England to be a commonwealth, he actually confiscated all these estates of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of the aristocracy. He took them back into public possession, and that's what sort of irritated them. So when Cromwell died, there were all, all these elite and so forth. They came back in, and, and Charles II said, yeah, you can have all your estates back again. So uh, the more to it than meets the eye. And, Behind it, it's the, the lust for, for power, the lust for money. Do you think the issues that uh, Prince Andrew has had uh, as a result of his friendship with Jeffrey Epstein, do you think that the, the power of the monarchy, perhaps behind the scenes... I'll had... be never clear. I mean, you, you can only talk about what you know, so I, I can't talk about uh, the, the fellow who lives up in that house up there, I wouldn't have a clue, you know? You've got to get all your information 
uh, complete be before you can open your mouth, before you can make a judgment of any sort whatsoever. So, uh, what uh, uh, Andrew or, uh, has done, you know, that's got to be brought into a court. And, and there they've got to have the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and then a jury will decide his fate. And that's what's been denied uh, to us, you know, it's been denied by uh, Julian Assange, it's been denied to us. We, we are not allowed the administration of justice, so as far as Andrew is concerned, you know, all, all these deeds or misdeeds, it's, it, I, d I don't know, so I can't, I can't make a comment.